George Raveling brings his squad into the huddle. There's George Raveling getting his bench players directed. And Coach George Raveling told his Cougars to put a lot of pressure. Washington State was special uh, in 1972 when I came here. I look back on it now and, and, and realize how blessed I was to get a chance, first of all, to be the head coach here. Washington State was willing to to take a, a risk on me. All right, play get to the defense. Whatever you do, don't give him a three-point play in there. George Raveling was ahead of his time. To say he was just a good coach is just, that's the ultimate short change. You know, he was a historian. He was an academician. He was a uh, mentor. Uh, he helped so many young coaches, and he was so willing to share. My mailbox in Odessa, I had something in the mail from Washington State every day. He asked me was what my dream uh, playing basketball would be like. Here's this beautiful campus. It was a place where they could concentrate on their academics and on their basketball. Very articulate. His sentences made so much sense to me. He personalized everything. I just think he has a, a, a magical ability to connect with people. He's just a bigger in life personality, has a huge charisma, enjoys what he was doing. George was a tremendous promoter. First time I saw him stand up out of that director's chair and raise his arms up to the sky and the student section responding to it. If he stood up on a bench and put his hands up in kind of a touchdown type symbol, the crowd would go crazy. He didn't show any hesitation uh, whatsoever about his status and where he was at. He's just kind of been a great ambassador for the game. He has a very good understanding of what basketball can do for other people. George did everything first class. He was a first class guy. He treated everybody like they were special. The, the 11 years I spent here, I felt like I was rubbing shoulders with my cousins, my uncles, my brothers, my nieces. And, you know, I, I'm not going to accept the award as a George Traveling Award. It's, it, there's a lot of people that, that made it possible for that award to go up there. And really, so when the shirt's up there, there's going to be a lot of the uh, invisible people's names up there on, that, that made it possible for, for this to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the court now is the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer, Collegiate Basketball Hall of Famer, one of the greatest coaches in Washington State history. Please welcome back home to Pullman, George Ravelli. Fans at this time, Washington State University President Kirk Schultz, Athletic Director Pat Chun are presenting Coach Raveling with a special commemorative basketball. Good to see you, sir. Best wishes for you. It's all yours, Coach. OK. Thank you for bringing me back home. I'm going to read my, what I wrote because I'm 83 and I'm f forgetful. I invested 11 years of my life in this community, this university, this state, and this state and this community and this university invested 11 years in me. And when I look back now, it was a marriage made for, for, in heaven. I can tell you this, 
I loved every second, every minute, every hour, every day that I worked at this university. My 11 years at WSU were about learning and growing, teaching and building, laughing and crying, doing and undoing, winning and losing. At Washington State, we never lost. We either won or we learned, but we never lost. <laughs> the question is frequently asked of me, George, how did you live in Pullman for 11 years? <laughs> you, someone just said it's easy, and you're right, ma'am. The, the, my answer is simple. I surrounded myself with individuals whom I trusted, respected, loved, and appreciated. People who were my truth tellers and my true believers. They were loyal, highly skilled, and talented. They loved WSU, they loved its athletic program, and they loved its athletes. And as I look back now in reflection, people are asking me the wrong question. Instead of asking me how I stayed 11 years, they should ask me why I left, because they probably... <laughs> At the end of the day, each of us are the sum total of the places we've been, the books we've read, the people we've met. We, we, we've met. And some of the finest people I've ever met in my life were the people that worked with me during my 11 years here at Washington State. So, At this moment, we're gathered to celebrate the achievement of not a single coach. We are honoring a, a litany of persons who made it possible for the coach to be selected. No one achieves success alone. It took a whole group of people to, to make me eligible for this particular moment. This award is not about your traveling. It's about others, individuals who allowed me to recognize them as positive, the people I want to recognize as positive difference makers during my tenure here at Washington State. And I would ask for your forgiveness and your patience as I try to recognize the people who are the real reasons that this banner will be up in the, in the rafters. The president, Dr. Glenn Terrell, one of the finest human beings I ever met in my life. A gentleman the court is named after, Dr. Wallace Beasley, Ray Nagel, Sam Jankovic, Jim Livingood, Rod Commons, Oh man, if I wanted to get pumped up, all I had to do was be around Jim Sweeney. <laughs> Jim Walton, Bobo Brayton, John Chaplin, and my, the staff that I had over the years, John Heff and Ryder and Mark Edwards and Furtick and Puglisi. Three of the greatest cougs in my mind of all time. It could, it, there was nothing that they wouldn't do to help me succeed. One was Jerry Camp, 
Camp Chevrolet in Spokane, Dennis DeYoung and Ray Sunquist. A, a young lady I'd like to point out who was here during my time, I think she's one of the greatest athletes we ever had here at WSU, Jeannie Egger. And we, we, had a quite, we have quite a litany of, of NBA players, but I'm gonna name the guys that built this program. Brick by brick, sweat by sweat, effort by effort, tough-minded honchos, Steve Padakis, James Donaldson, Craig Elo, Guy Williams, Donald Collins, the only player in the history of Washington State to be player of the year in the conference. Donald Collins, Norton Barnhill, Ronnie Davis, all of these people played in the NBA. Brian, uh, I have to miss mentioned Brian Pollard because he, he destroyed Sam's budget when he tore the rim down and, and we had to get a new backboard and Sam says, where are we going to get the money? <laughs> Which was typical Sam. Uh, Aaron Haskins, Terry Kelly, Brad Jackson. But the, the people that I really want to accent are, 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 is, the, is the student body. The, we had the greatest student body in the country. And so I, I'm just going to close and say thank you. And I appreciate you guys taking a chance on me. Coach. Thank you for everything you've done with for Washington State. As that banner goes up, we want Cougs all over the world to see your name. And just remember, you can change the world from Washington State University. Absolutely. Go Cougs, let's put that thing up. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Raveling's banner will be permanently placed alongside Cougar greats Steve Padakis and Clay Thompson. Coach Raveling is the only WSU basketball coach bestowed this honor. Once again, Cougar great, George Raveling. Hey, let's bring them back out. We're gonna win this game. We're gonna kick the, the Huskies' butts. Let's get ready. Yeah.